In this video, we'll use the information from the previous several videos to create a new API, define the schema, security, resolvers, and resolver mappings, then we'll run some test queries to validate our work. Let's get started. Our objective is to create a GraphQL API for Misty Mountain Adventures, who already have an app to track cases their clients have encountered on recent adventures. Here's the table of cases they would like to access. Now, since this API will be tied to the Misty Mountain scope, we'll start by setting our application scope here. Next, we'll navigate to All, System Web Services, GraphQL, GraphQL APIs, and create a new record. We'll give the record name Case Queries and note that the schema namespace automatically populates. Before we get to the details of the schema, we'll go down to the security section and turn off ACL authorization. Now back to the schema. We see we've already got the basic blocks in place and all we need to do is fill in our details. We'll start by creating a couple of simple query functions called getCases and getCase. GetCases has a few parameters for query string, optional filter for the customer ID, and limit on how many records to retrieve. GetCase simply accepts a mandatory ID and returns the details. Of course, we have to define the type case or none of this will work. So down here, we'll create a new type case. Behind the scenes, the case table is extended from task, which gives us over 60 fields to choose from but our schema is only going to expose these fields. If you watched the earlier video on resolvers, you'll remember the at source directive helps us retrieve individual field values from a glide record object retrieved by the resolver. Let's save our API record and build that resolver now. Down in the related list, we'll create a new GraphQL scripted resolver record. We'll call it getCase. In our script, we'll use env.getArguments to check which parameters have been provided and add them to the glide record query. At the end, we simply return a glide record object. If the query called for multiple records, there's an implicit while loop that retrieves as many as necessary. Let's click Submit here and go to the GraphQL Resolver Mappings related list and click New. This is the part that's often forgotten, so don't forget your mappings. In the path, we can see the various case fields and two queries. Let's choose Query Get Case and map it to the only resolver we have, Get Case. Then click Submit. We'll quickly create another mapping for Query Get Cases to the same resolver. Finally, we'll use a query to test retrieving a case. And with a quick modification, we can test getting multiple cases. Notice that the response only gave us four fields, number, short description, state, and impact, even though the schema has several more and we know that the case record has even more than that, which are not exposed via the schema. The reason we only got four is because the query only asks specifically for those four fields. Hopefully, you're starting to see the power and flexibility of GraphQL APIs. We'll look at some of the additional features such as going beyond the basic data types to more complex data in the next video. I hope you'll join me.